Hi, I'm Steve Weinrieb, and I'm here to show you the new photographic toning presets in Adobe Photoshop CS6. These presets are dear to my heart because I created them, and the Photoshop team was nice enough to include them in Photoshop CS6 for everyone to use. I'm going to show you where to find them, how to use them in simple and more complex ways, and how to have loads of flexibility when you do use them. First, I'm just going to scroll through this sampling of the presets, and you'll see that each one is a different chemical tint or chemical toning technique, and some are split toning techniques, with one chemical applied to the shadows and a different chemical applied to the highlights. We're doing this now digitally, but all these tints were sampled from real-world vintage and contemporary prints that were toned with these techniques. Now let me minimize this, and I'll show you where to find them in Photoshop. You add these toning presets by using a gradient map adjustment layer. You get to the gradient map adjustment from the adjustments panel or from the adjustment layer list at the bottom of the layers panel. Please avoid using this adjustment from the image adjustments menu because those adjustments are destructive. The adjustment is baked into the pixels and you're unable to go back and make changes without destroying the original pixels in your image. So let's add a gradient map adjustment to this image. And the first thing you might see when you add a gradient map adjustment is that your image becomes kind of psychedelic. What happens is your foreground and background colors, even if they are black and white, become mapped to the highlights and the shadows in your image. That's the way the gradient map works. But that's not what we're going for here. So what I'm going to do is click on the drop-down menu of the gradient map adjustment in the new properties panel and then click on the cogwheel settings icon and drag over and down and here we see the list of presets that come with your gradients and there's the photographic toning preset. Click on that, click OK and there are the 38 photographic toning adjustments in Photoshop. Now what I'm going to do is click on this cogwheel settings icon again and go to the small list and that way we can see the names of the adjustments along with the adjustment. And we'll start with Platinum. The Platinum adjustment, or the Platinum preset rather, applies the tint of actual Platinum prints to your image. The colors were sampled from prints that were toned in Platinum Toner, and those colors were brought into the gradient map adjustment and then applied to the different tonal values to apply that toning to images. Then we have selenium, a couple of different, several different sepia tints because sepia has many different permutations and I wanted to give variations here. Sepia highlights, sepia in the midtones only, gold toner, blue toner, cyan, copper, sepia selenium. Now we're getting into the split toning. Sepia cyan, sepia blue, gold sepia, gold selenium, gold copper, gold blue, blue selenium, and cobalt iron. Three versions of that. So lots of ways that you can use traditional chemical toning to apply to your images. Let's take a look under the hood and see what's going on. First of all, when I apply these photographic toning presets when I created them, I added color stops to the gradient map that were sampled from the colors of actual tone prints. So let me just reset my workspace here and show you an example of a sepia print. Here's another sepia print. I took averages from multiple prints for each of these chemical toning presets. And what I would do is I would go into different regions in the image, the highlights, the shadows, the midtones, and sample the colors that were in these prints. So let me go back to our image here. And I'm going to open up the gradient editor. To get open up the gradient editor, I click in the preview of the gradient here in the properties panel. There's the gradient editor. And we have color stops. And each color stop is assigned a value where that color was in the toned print that I sampled the color from. So for example, this color stop is at the 75% brightness value. 
and that color was sampled from 75% brightness of an image tinted with this toner. In this case, I think I'm on cobalt iron, and this would be the iron toner portion of the split toning. The way that the gradient map works, when you're looking at the gradient editor here, is like a levels adjustment. So the stops at the left are mapped to the shadows in your image, and the stops at the right are mapped to your, the highlights in your image. And of course, the stop here would be mapped to the middle gray in your image, and so forth, all along the percentage range. Then, for each stop, I was very careful to choose a color that was assigned in the chemical toning print that I sampled the color from in that region of tones. But you can have loads of flexibility with these toning presets by dragging the stops. If you adjust a stop in a particular region here, you'll see that you apply that color to different tonal regions, again, like levels, left to right, shadows to highlights. If you double click on any one of the stops and open up the color picker, you can add or take away saturation of a color or change the brightness value of that color. Now I recommend if you do this, make small moves. If you, unless you want to get pretty far afield from the actual chemical toning, but because I mapped these from actual prints that were toned with these chemicals, small moves will give you variations within a range that would be valid for that chemical. Large moves are going to give you something else entirely. So I'm going to click Cancel there. And let's just take a look at another image. We'll take this image here, add a gradient map adjustment. There's our platinum, selenium, sepia, gold, cyanotype, copper, and then we get into some of our split toning. And while some of the split toning techniques may look quite good for one image, another split toning technique might not look so good for a specific image. So depending on the image, you might find that the uh, colors, and when they map to the colors in your, the, the tones in your image, may not be the most attractive for that specific image. For example, the blue doesn't look great on the guy's face here. But I might switch to a different image. Let's do that. And this is an image, a color image, that I added a black and white adjustment to. Let me just reset the workspace. There's the black and white adjustment. And now I'll add a gradient map adjustment. And the same toning that may not work for one image might work very nicely for another image. Also, I want to underscore here that by adding a black and white adjustment first in your layer stack, even though you don't have to, to convert your image to the tinted black and white, by adding a black and white adjustment layer, you can go in and adjust the underlying tones in your image, and by doing so, you can change the values in the way the tones play on the colors in your image. Here's an image that has a fairly washed out sky. Again, I'm going to add a gradient map adjustment. And once again, I'll start up here with platinum. And I'll move on down to sepia. The image looks quite smooth with most of the tints. And something else I'll point out here as I'm doing this, even though the sky in this image was fairly blown out because the colors in the sky are being mapped to some darker hues, then I can end up with even more concentrated color in an area that previously was fairly washed out. And I'm looking for a specific problem that I want to alert you to. In case you ever run across it, I'm going to show you how to fix it. So I'm going down here to gold sepia. And I'm going to zoom in. And you'll see that the way that the color stops in gold sepia map to the shadows of this image, 
we see a little bit of noise or what looks like banding, a jump from one color to another or one tone to another. I'll open up the gradient editor and we see these two stops down here in the shadow region. The first color here, the darkest one, is being mapped to this stop. The second color is being mapped to this stop. By dragging that stop to the right, I can smooth out those values in that region. Just a little bit of, here's how you fix it, if you run into it. So there you go. Photographic toning. Do it simply by clicking on one of the presets or tone your photo with loads of flexibility by adding a black and white adjustment layer or by changing the values of the preset in the gradient editor. Thanks to Whole Cloth Productions for hosting this video. I'm Steve Weinrieb and you can see more on my blog, modestudio.us and imagingrr.com.